First, I want everyone to recognize I have not put Alan Wake 2 in this tier list. Already, I mean, I don't want to say it, but... We're starting this year with the worst games. Number 1, Like a Sword Saint Ishin. Honorable mentions, every other game. None of them win. This year was shit. Alright, now for the best games. Hogwarts Legacy. Sorry, you haven't reached this part of the review yet. Come back in three more ranks. I am seriously regretting what I said at the end of this video. Here's the full story of the game, right? So, Mojang had a baby, then Microsoft became the designated caretaker, and Microsoft took the baby and threw it out of the window of the hospital they were in. Then the baby fell on a pile of burning coals. After that, he tumbled into a guillotine, then rolled into the mouth of an alligator, who then spat him out into the mouth of an active volcano. Despite all of this, the baby came out entirely unscathed, except for one teensy-weensy little blister on his arm that the doctor said could be easily treated, but will result in the baby's death if not treated. Microsoft, of course, said no, and humanity forever lost a super baby. This is by far the simplest game on this list, and it's also the closest sequel game to its predecessor. That being said, clearly the concept works, because I've enjoyed making some broken dangling bridges, and I can equally appreciate forcing gamers to be smart, because they clearly need it. Anybody got three mics? I got four. Yeah, yes, yes, Fuck yes, you, howdy, 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 howdy. Yeah, let me get a mic. Yellow, yes, yeah, it's not that serious, man. Yeah, whatever, you sound like a nigga. Keep trying your best, buddy. We all have faith in you. No, he sucks. Well, now I don't know who to believe. Who do I believe now? Believe me, I've never lied. I have a PhD. Oh, uh, yeah, look, it's written right there. Oh, I guess you could just scrap what I said then. Todd Howard realistically spent 12 years making a new game for it to come out just barely above average. I won't lie and say this game is worth its size and weight, or that there are any revolutionary mechanics involved, but there are certain things to be proud of Bethesda for. Some of us were there when Skyrim released, and those of you who are still alive today know Bethesda have been using the exact same development techniques for decades now, so adding base building and actual varied cities is something we can be happy to see has changed throughout the years. Alright, now you get to ride a hippogriff and make your own gear. About 3 more hours into the game you'll find it actually starts to get fun, because once you have all the tools, this is an actual polished game. It's a damn shame, because I would have put it way higher if I didn't have to play through 50 Reach Destination quests before finally meeting Voldemort. Alright William, now you really gotta done it. You hate Breath of the Wild, but like Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> right, that makes sense. Idiot. Guys, send him a bunch of hate comments, that is just unreasonable. Tears of the Kingdom delivers where Breath of the Wild doesn't. I was never serious when making fun of Breath of the Wild in the past, but I did make a couple valid points here and then. Breath of the Wild was empty in many ways. Tears of the Kingdom allows the player to avoid a lot of the emptiness. First, it's worth acknowledging the new Skyview Towers, which instead of limiting the vision of the player and the distance they could travel by locking them to the fixed height of the tower itself, now allow the player to go and see absolutely wherever they want, so long as they have the stamina of course. Then there's the abilities, which the player always has access to, they leave way more room for creativity, you can build your own rockets, weapons, physics, shortcuts, you name it. I do miss the bombs quite a bit, but there's probably some way to create your own bombs with the tools given you in Tears of the Kingdom, I just haven't thought up yet. Unlike Breath of the Wild, it doesn't seem like the challenges force you to find the one solution that solves the problem, but instead allows you to cheat if you want. Thus, you're never stuck at the same place for too long. FPS games no longer exist. It's nice to finally see one again. I spent most of my time in this game just trolling and getting banned for it. I don't think anybody takes this game too seriously, which is good, because that's exactly the nature of the game itself. Still, they went through the effort to add a ton more realism and convenience changes to the old game. All in all, a great improvement on what was already an extremely entertaining product. Someone forgot to turn off the dying mechanic. Dying isn't a threat in the base game, dying is 90% of the game during the boss fights. FromSoft, just turn it off. I have a full video describing the game, yet I think it's relevant to expand on it now and talk about the lack of a leveling system. In previous FromSoft games, namely Every Souls-like, leveling is carefully planned to have the bosses give you just enough money to get to the strength you should be at in the game once you reach them. In Armored Core 6, they ditch the leveling system, but continue to make the bosses more and more impossible. I believe the concept is that you are supposed to be creative with your builds, but I don't think there's any way you can make this reasonable to defeat. I do like the idea though, and I still enjoyed moving around the map super cleanly and slickly. I think there's definitely work to be done, but with a couple major adjustments, this game can hang with the other big boys. Considering a game by the same studio that didn't even come out in 2022 came second in my 2022 ranking, this is no real surprise. If Nintendo farted, it would be more enjoyable than if I farted. And that's saying something. Considering a game by the same studio came fourth in my 2023 ranking, this is no real surprise. 
Okay, but seriously, how is it that Nintendo released two top games in a single year, and yet other game studios can't even release one? Ever. It's strange, because there really is nothing coming out that even attempts to match the gameplay of some of these games, yet still, they're super entertaining every time. You have to wonder whether Nintendo is just that good, or that their lawyers are just that good. It's not fair, it's not, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair. It's not fair. I am the worst at this game, but I still love it. It feels like they've come a long way with fighting games. They're so refined at this point that you might have never touched a controller in your life and still pick this game up with modern controls in the span of a couple days. The game does not limit itself in its creativity. They added a fighting hub. They added funny character interactions. They even added new voice lines. My favorite part is when Sangif picks up the enemy and goes, In a dark time, when The loathing howls. You begin looking for a good game. Fight through the fatigue. Remain undeterred, and you will yet prevail. An unexpected find. If you hope to have fun, you have chosen wisely. Things they did differently from the first game? All worked out. Bravo! Excellent work. The narration, the art style, the gameplay, everything. And I mean absolutely everything. Executed with impunity.